The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Hi, this is Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner in for sweaty and pissed, menopause and more. I am going to speak to you today about supporting the immune system during COVID-19. I frequently receive questions from my patients about what supplements they can take to help prevent COVID-19. And while we don't have anything available to prevent this virus, uh, there are supplements that one can take to help support the immune system and therefore help fight off potential infection. There are no robust studies ongoing to determine if some supplements available will help reduce the risk of contracting COVID-19, and it's, it's important to understand that no supplement, diet, or other lifestyle modification other than physical distancing, also known as social distancing, uh, and proper hygiene practices, including mask wearing, frequent hand washing, or use of hand sanitizer, can protect you from COVID-19. However, it is still key to do what you can to support your immune system during this pandemic. And that's what I'm hoping to help you with today. The first supplement I want to speak about is zinc. Zinc is an important supplement for the immune function. It plays a role in the production of antibodies and white blood cells that help fight infections. Zinc deficiency increases inflammation, and decreases the production of antibodies. High-dose zinc has also been found to reduce the duration of symptoms of the common cold. It is not yet clear whether zinc supplementation benefits patients with lower respiratory tract infections such as COVID-19, but because of its role in immune function and potential to decrease coronavirus replication, Zinc is currently being investigated for the treatment of patients with COVID-19. I recommend 30 to 50 milligrams of zinc daily. It is available in caps or lozenges. It also comes in the form of a throat spray. Please do not use zinc throat sprays in the nose, as I have had two patients who have lost their sense of smell after using zinc nasally. Zycam nasal swabs used to contain zinc, uh, but there were many complaints to the FDA about loss of smell. And so it is now a zinc-free homeopathic treatment. Um, so it, does, it no longer contains zinc. A couple of brand options for zinc supplements include Garden of Life Vitamin Code Raw Zinc, and life extension zinc caps. And I want to remind everyone that throughout this podcast on supplements, these are all adult dosing recommendations. And I will have the links to all these supplements in the blog, which appears at the bottom of the web page on our web page, sweatyandpissed.com. The second supplement I want to talk about is vitamin D. And vitamin D deficiency is common due to lack of sun exposure and use of sunscreen, due to older age or corticosteroid use or darker skin. All are factors that are associated with lower concentrations of 25 hydroxyvitamin D. A higher incidence of acute respiratory infections is associated with vitamin D deficiency. Additionally, a link between seasonal influenza and vitamin D deficiency has been hypothesized. Vitamin D supplementation has also been known to decrease the incidence of acute respiratory infection. And while taking vitamin D has yet to be studied for prevention of COVID-19 infection, some recent Recent articles have recommended taking daily supplements to raise 25 hydroxyvitamin D concentrations to reduce infection risk. 
I check vitamin D levels on all of my patients, and the vast majority are vitamin D deficient when not supplementing with the nutrient. If you have not had your blood level checked, I recommend taking vitamin D3, 1,000 IUs, 1,000 IUs, which is also now labeled as 25 micrograms. That dosage is being changed from an international unit to micrograms. So 1,000 IUs or 25 micrograms up to 2,000 IUs, 50 micrograms once daily. And also ask your provider to check this level at your next appointment. There is prescription vitamin D2 available in a 50,000 IU once weekly dosing, but vitamin D3 is the preferred form of supplementation. There is a, an over-the-counter 50,000 IU cap of vitamin D3 available, but I do not recommend this dosing unless you have, a, have had a blood test to check your level and have been advised by a medical professional to take a high-dose vitamin D replacement. Most of my patients require 5,000 IUs daily based on their lab work. Again, Garden of Life Vitamin Code has a raw D3 in 2,000 IUs and 5,000 IU caps. They also have a a 2,000 IU chewable vegan D3 and an organic D3 spray that contains 1,000 IUs per spray. So there are a lot of options there. If you don't want to take a cap or have trouble swallowing caps, they do have a chewable or a spray form that you can use. The third supplement I'd like to speak about is vitamin C or ascorbic acid, which is an antioxidant. And a number of studies suggest that vitamin C supplementation impacts the immune system by supporting the function of various immune cells and enhancing their ability to protect against infection. It is also necessary for cellular death which helps keep your immune system healthy by clearing out old cells and replacing them with new ones. Studies in birds have shown that vitamin C might protect against avian coronavirus infection, with human trials finding that vitamin C may decrease susceptibility to viral respiratory infections and pneumonia. New clinical trials are underway in China and the United States to determine if vitamin C might be used as a treatment for COVID-19. I recommend dosing vitamin C 500 milligrams twice daily. Garden of Life raw vitamin C contains 500 milligrams of vitamin C and probiotics and gastric enzymes to help with absorption. We're going to take a little break right now, and uh, I will be back and talk about a couple more supplements, and I also want to discuss blood typing and COVID-19 with you. So I'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. And before we get started on the second half of this podcast, I want to remind everyone to check out our Facebook page, Sweaty and Pissed, and our website, sweatyandpissed.com, where you can find merchandise for Sweaty and Pissed that includes socks and shirts and fanny packs and masks and just fun colors and fun things uh, that you will enjoy. And before I get started, I do want to remind you uh, that the information from this podcast will be in a blog on our website, sweatyandpissed.com, at the bottom of the webpage, and you will be able to find the blog with all the links to the supplements that I discussed today. The next supplement is N-acetylcysteine, and it's often abbreviated N-A-C, N as in Nancy, A-C. And N-acetylcysteine converts to glutathione, which is an antioxidant that becomes depleted when oxidative stress or systemic inflammation is present. And we've talked about glutathione supplementation before on our podcast, but Specifically today, we're talking about N-acetylcysteine, which also converts to glutathione. Administering this supplement 
provides anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects in a number of pulmonary diseases, including viral pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Because patients with COVID-19 have evidence of systemic inflammation, often have their course complicated excuse me, by acute respiratory distress syndrome. And they may have respiratory mucus buildup, limiting adequate airflow, and they will use systemic or aerosolized N-acetylcysteine or both uh, because it can be beneficial in this specific patient population. Aerosolized NAC is a prescription medication that is used for treatment of pulmonary disease, not a supplement option that is being discussed here. But N-acetylcysteine is something you can take over the counter, and it's available typically in a 600 milligram cap, and the dosing is a six is 600 milligrams once daily. And Life Extension makes an NAC. 600 milligram cap, uh, but there are many other brands available on the market, and I will have a link to that life extension cap. The last supplement I want to speak about is elderberry. Black elderberry, which has long been used to treat infections, is being researched for its effects on immune health. Elderberry extract in test tube studies demonstrates potent antibacterial and antiviral potential against pathogens responsible for upper respiratory tract infections and against influenza virus strains. Additionally, it enhances immune system response and may help shorten the duration and severity of colds, as well as reduce symptoms related to viral infections. Although it was a small study, a review of four randomized control studies in 180 people found that elderberry supplements significantly reduced upper respiratory symptoms caused by viral infections. Elderberry supplements are most often found sold in liquid or capsule form. Gaia Herbs has an elderberry gummy with a standard dosing of two gummies daily. They also offer elderberry syrup, one teaspoon daily, and elderberry caps, one cap twice daily. Again, these are adult dosing. Uh, Gaia Herbs does have uh, children's supplements with containing elderberry, so that might be an option for your children if appropriate. You do not have to take all of these supplements I spoke of today, but the combination of these supplements um, is a good little immune support package that you may want to consider, uh, depending on what you tolerate and uh, what you need. If you're already taking vitamin D, then maybe consider adding some or all of the remainder of the supplements I discussed today. Unrelated to supplement recommendations, um, I have also received many requests from patients to look in their chart and tell them their blood type. So they'll say to me, Karen, can you just look at my chart and see what my blood type is? And I don't have that information because um, it, for a couple reasons, this test is not routinely done in a primary care office um, because first of all, if you need blood products in the hospital, they will check your blood type just prior to administration of those products. And they are not going to rely on you to tell them your blood type because that mistake would be disastrous if it was incorrect. Um, but this, the other reason is um, many um, insurances don't cover that blood test. Uh, so the only type of medical practice that routinely checks blood type is an obstetrics office because that information is needed for the appropriate care of the mother and baby. But I've had this question um, come up because there has been much discussion in the media about blood type and the risk of COVID infection. So if you do not you know your blood type, you can either ask your primary care provider to uh, get, uh, check your blood type. You may have to sign a waiver stating that you will pay for the test if your insurance does not pay. Other ways to get that information is to either donate blood, which is always a good thing to do, and they will give you your blood type, or use a so simple home test kit, like the one from Diamo, uh, and it's about 10 bucks. It's $9.95, and um, 
you just order the kit, comes to your home, and you test your blood yourself with a finger prick uh, blood spot test. So uh, again, I have that link to Diama Home Test Kit uh, in the blog. So I do want to speak a little bit about what we know about blood type and COVID-19. The research to determine a possible relationship between blood types and the risk of COVID infections and complications began in March in 2020 in China. They observed that people with type A blood appeared to be at significantly higher risk of contracting the virus. The risk for individuals for type O blood appeared to be significantly lower. Individuals with type A blood also represented a higher percentage of patients who succumbed to the illness, 41% versus 25% for type O. Then in April, researchers at Columbia University in New York City reported similar risks associated with type A blood after blood typing more than 1,500 New Yorkers and testing them for COVID-19. Researchers in Italy and Spain, like researchers in China and New York, found a higher risk for severe illness among individuals with type A blood and a protective effect for type O. Type A blood was associated with a 45% increased risk of having respiratory failure, while type O was associated with a 35% reduction in risk. That's from the studies from Italy and Spain. Of course, your blood type is something you cannot control. So please don't panic if you have type A blood, and please don't feel complacent if you're type O. What we do have control over is how we live our lives. So keep wearing that mask, keep socially distancing, and keep washing your hands. We know these actions will help reduce our risk of COVID-19 infection. As a reminder, the following recommendations from the World Health Organization and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to prevent COVID-19 infection include... Avoid large events and mass gatherings. I know you're tempted to go to that wedding, tempted to go to that pool party. Please avoid mass gatherings like that. Avoid close contact with anyone who's sick or has symptoms. Stay home as much as possible and keep distance between yourself and others, especially while COVID is spreading rapidly in the community. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Cover your face with a cloth face covering in a public place, such as a grocery store, where it's difficult to avoid close contact with others. Cover your mouth and nose with your elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze and throw away that used tissue and wash your hands after you've used the tissue. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Avoid sharing dishes, glasses, bedding, and other household items if you're sick. Clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces daily. Please, please, please stay at home when you're sick. Stay at home from work, school, and public areas when you're sick, unless you're going somewhere to get medical care. Avoid taking public transportation when you're sick. And remember that before traveling, check the CDC and WHO websites or WHO websites to look for health advisories that may be in the place you're heading. I know you've heard these things before, but I just wanted to remind you of the measures you can take. Since you can't control your blood type, the measures you can take to be safe, keep your family stay safe, keep your friends safe, so we can get through this thing. And we will get through this thing. But the more we can do as a united family of people, the sooner we'll see an end to this COVID-19 pandemic. 
I hope this list of supplements will be helpful to you. And I look forward to speaking with you next week along with Leanne. I appreciate your listening. And don't forget to check out the merchandise on our website, sweatyandpiss.com, or our Facebook page. And we appreciate all your comments and questions that you share with us on Facebook page. So keep those coming. I want to thank Forrest Wenzel for producing the podcast and for his theme music and hard work in general. And uh, again, thanks to Stephen Brown for our artwork. And we really look forward to hearing from you and speaking with you next time. Be safe and wear a mask. Sweaty and pissed.